In late April, early May, we uplifted the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander COVID Hawaii response team. And we call it the three R because we looked at response, recovery, and resiliency that we recognize that for our community in particular, it wasn't just about addressing COVID. It was addressing some of these other mitigating factors like um, chronic diseases, social determinants of health, things that we know would inadvertently impact the numbers and what we do to help our community. We also needed to look at Pacific Islanders. So we reached across and we invited um, our Pacific Islander partners and cousins to the table. We were very fortunate that there were a lot of community businesses, community groups that would procure large amounts of PPE and reach out to smaller communities and literally, you know, distributing in parking lots um, in different communities just to get that out. Last summer, so we're talking June, July, we were already asking our state department, what's the plans for vaccinations? Let us start creating messaging. Let us start rolling those things out. That didn't happen until after December when they were already starting to vaccinate. So when we look at that ability to not just deal with the immediate, but how do we step out of that and go, okay, what are some possible scenarios? When we look at COVID, I think people thought COVID was in a bubble, that it was only related to health. And one of the things that I, I think for me that came out was it wasn't. You know, we talked about, we're talking about economics, we're talking about housing and education, we're talking about employment, right? We're talking this whole spectrum. We're talking about resource management of land and, and water and all of that. There were definite challenges, but I think in all the different areas, communities really showed resiliency and really coming together that despite maybe best efforts of state agencies or government, that they were able to still get things done.